up against a guy like Tyreek Hill and her team, how much of an advantage or an asset is it to have someone like Jerry Sneed? Um, huge. Obviously played against him multiple times before in big games and big spots. Um, he is no uh, no stranger to his speed and ability, um, but he's he's played against him enough times to know to know what that feels like, and uh, it's to be a nice matchup. Those are two elite players in our league, and those are what people pay to see. Those battles in the, in the playoff game last year. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it was uh, it's a good battle. I mean, it's uh, LJ's got a way about him. Um, he's got a physical nature to his game, and um, it was fun to watch those two compete. That was a really really fun matchup. Extra day this week from a, I guess from a preparation standpoint, maybe from managing health standpoint. Yeah, today was just a, a walkthrough for us, um, and then the players are pretty much, pretty much done today. It gives them one more extra day to recover from the Sunday's game, and um, we introduced a little bits and pieces of the of the game plan for them. Um, so they'll they get to start their week basically a day later. Um, so tomorrow is like our our Wednesday, our first day of the week. Um, this was just a little bit of a bonus walkthrough and installation. And then for us on the coaching staff, we do all the work on the front end, and then we catch the, the end of the week as our extra time. Uh, so we try to stay on schedule for us game planning wise, and the players get an extra day. I know it probably sounds complicated, but that's how we do it. Jeff said making the plays he's supposed to make. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's even missed a couple of those. He's kind of regarded as the, the in house as a superstar mm -hmm. of, of this team. Should, shouldn't there be more coming from, from a guy of his stature? Um, I'll say the same thing I said to our entire team the other day is, is we need more from everybody. Um, that's a that's from top to bottom. That's from me. Uh, that's from our coaching staff. That's from our players. I mean, we're we're at 0-3, and, and um, whatever we've done to this point ultimately hasn't been enough, and we need more from everybody. Um, but as far as Jeff's specific play, I'm happy with where Jeff's at and what he's done for us. Um, but again, I just think that there needs to be uh, another level that we have to unlock uh, across our team on all three phases and uh, and our coaching staff and my coaching as well. So that part of it, I think, is – uh, where we're where we're at is we're we're on three and we need more from everybody. What's the biggest? Uh, you've talked before about trying not to force your team into the the hole that is your scheme and adjusting mm -hmm. to what they're good at. Uh, at th three weeks, have you identified some of those things they're good at, maybe not as good at, um, and maybe what's an example of something like that? Certainly, there's a lot of things I've I've learned about. It's more about learning about the players too. You know, things that they what they're like on game day, how they react to certain things, what uh, feedback you get from them. I feel really a lot better about my knowledge of, of what our players are like three weeks in than I did three weeks ago, for sure. And um, some of the schematics that suit Will well, some of the things that help our offensive line. Uh, again, got to find more of those things. But um, I feel good about how much I've learned in a short amount of time. And it's helpful because it helps me put those guys in better position. Um, you know, as far as specifics, I don't want to give away too much because that process is still ongoing. But um, there's definitely things that I've, I've learned every week and uh, refined our process, uh, refined my own process. I feel a lot more confident calling plays Sunday than I did the Sunday before and about putting our guys in the right spot. So uh, it's an ongoing ongoing process that we're having, but I, I feel good about what I've learned so far. The, the success, that tempo and being on the ball has gotten you guys later in games. Is that something you would consider like doing a little bit more earlier in the game to find that sense of urgency for you as well as the, the offense itself? Yeah, there's a mix. Um, I think a common thing that happens is when you get into those two minute spots at the end of games, or, um, you know, the defense changes too, because they're, they're in a different style. Um, so it's not always an apples to apples comparison at, at, at the end of the game to, to early in the game, but but certainly there's a there's a place for for tempo, um, there's a place for changing your tempo out of the huddle. Um, you know those are all things that, that we look at and uh, have in our arsenal to, to use. So those are definitely things that we've we've considered. Is there something that could be said to like the urgency that you know it creates? You know being on the ball. Yeah, and, there's yeah. also an execution part of it too. Um, you know, I've learned some lessons over the years. We did a lot of tempo in, in Denver with, with Peyton, and we were on the ball quite a bit. And um, sometimes when you try to emulate that, and you end up going three and out really fast sometimes too. And part of that is uh, possessing the football and helping your defense out. There's a complimentary piece to it. So um, it's just be mindful of it, um, but there's a place for it, certainly. What have you liked about the way Jarvis goes about his work and specifically how he's embracing the opportunity this week? Um, yeah, everything about Jarvis, uh, his mindset, his intensity, um, the way that he plays is exciting. Um, he's going to get a big opportunity to show what that looks like for him uh, in a game. And I think 
he's up to the task. Uh, he's mentally a, a, a pretty tough, pretty tough kid, and uh, I think he's got the skills to, to be a really good corner in this league. And he's going to get thrown into it probably uh, earlier than than maybe he expected. And I think that's exciting uh, for him. And we get a chance to see what what he looks like in that spot because this uh, this is a good group of receivers that he's going to go face. And the one thing I know about him is he's not scared. And uh, he is not—he is not intimidated, um, and that's what makes corners in this league good: is the ability to go out there and, and compete, regardless of of who they're playing against. So it'd be a good test for him. How would you characterize from your Monday conversation with Amy? Uh, business as usual. You know, we talk about all the things we always talk about: um, good, bad, questions she had, questions I had. Um, anything she wants to clarify from the game. I think we have a really good communication. Um, we've had it ever since I've been here. We've had it, and uh, I enjoy talking to her. I enjoy getting her feedback and getting her perspective. Uh, she's also been around a lot of different uh, eras of football, and it's you know she sees things for what they are, and we get a chance to communicate about it. So, uh, pretty pretty standard business as usual. That conversation. Uh, I mean, I, I enjoy talking to her. Our, our conversations sometimes go between you know anywhere from uh, twenty minutes to an hour, and those are usually. Uh, pretty enjoyable conversations too, so it was it was good. Kind of the same boat as last week with the t uh, other team questions at quarterback. What a difference in maybe some of their options. And imagine you were focused on making the Titans better, worried less about them. Yeah, I think that the, really whatever whoever they play out there, we got to make sure we're on top of our game and and we execute the, the game plan the way that's intended. Um, I think that that's the most important part. Uh, I do think that uh, I've I've watched you know I've seen Tim Boyle for a number of years. He's been around a while. Um, especially when he was, he was in Green Bay. I always enjoyed watching him throw in pregame. I always thought he had a pretty good talent. Um, and then he played against uh, Snoop Huntley. I mean, I've seen him play in playoff games. I've, he's a really good football player. And uh, so however they choose to deploy those guys, we'll be ready for it. Um, but ultimately, it's going to come down to how we execute and what we do, uh, regardless of who's playing quarterback for them. they got a lot of other good players, too, that uh, cause you enough concern. In terms of the mistakes, you talked about their speed. Sorry, Derek. You talked about their speed. What's the key to combating that? Um, it, it's it's a, a mix of things. You know, you got to affect the quarterback. Um, if you can't if you can't get the ball down the field, it's, it's hard to get the ball. If he can't get it off, um, and then you got to be you got to be on top of it. You got to be technically sound because they're so they're so good at what they do schematically um, as well as just physically talented. It's the whole picture is, is really complete for them. They do a great job. Um, so you got to be on your eye discipline and you got to be on your technique, and then um, you know you have to be able to match the the physical nature of what they do, and they run real fast. Um, and I think we got guys that can do that. And then you got to help with the secondary where you can, whether it's uh, two safety shells and cloud and all those things all, all factor into it. So uh, it'll be a mixed approach to how you handle those guys. It always is. You never want to give them one thing because they'll adjust to. Um, but that's how that's how I think the, the battle will play out, and you got to find a way to, to win more downs than they do. You preached, uh, you, preached, uh, you preached about cleaning up the mistakes and the things that have happened week to week. How many of those mistakes have kind of been overly punitive in terms of the result that's happened from them? It sure feels like a few of them have, you know, where you, you're giving up points the other way. I think I talked to on, on Monday after the game just about the, the point differential we've given up on the turnovers. Those have been pretty critical. Um, you know, it's one thing to turn the ball over and not give up touchdowns or hold people to field goals. We've, we've turned the ball over and, and given up uh, seven points, uh, which makes it really difficult to overcome. And, uh, you know, you have enough of those over a short amount of time. It's pretty – they can be pretty impactful, and they have been so far. So it's – our mistakes are, are too many, um, but when we have made them, they've been, you know, fatal in a sense. I mean, they, we've made some really, really critical mistakes. That. Is it a situation where you're not good enough right now to overcome those mistakes, like a lot of teams are able to do? Um, I don't. Wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. I just think that it just makes it even harder uh, for us in our first couple of games, and we're we're all trying to get familiar and comfortable and understanding what what all of us are are trying to get done. And um, yeah, it makes that part makes it a lot harder. Um, we haven't had enough success to sustain. Um, with a chance, you know, we haven't given ourselves a chance to win the game uh, because of those things. And I think winning sometimes validates your efforts in a sense. Um, again, I'm st I still very much focus on our process, but, you know, there's a validation that occurs with winning and uh, we haven't had that yet. And I think that it does go a long way when you knew and early on in, in your tenure, um, trying to get things off the ground, that the wins help validate your process. And we haven't gotten that yet. But I think a lot of it's because of um, some of the mistakes we've made along the way so far that we have to eliminate. I'll go back to you. I know this O-line is still um, trying to find its rhythm together. 
With Peter Skaronsky in particular, though, you know, maybe is he at the point where you guys thought he would be, or what are those things you need to still see out of him at that left guard spot? Yeah, I think those that left side's played pretty well for us. Um, I think there's some things in pass pro. I think early in the season, the first game or two, um, he was he was getting more comfortable with, and I think he played uh, decent last week. I mean, again, we haven't played well enough anywhere to feel like. Uh, we're able to win the game, but I've been pleased with where he's at. Um, he's performed well. Uh, he's going to have to keep growing and keep keep performing, though, because um, it's critical to have our, our our high pick players play at a high level. I mean, that's how you have a good football team. And right now, um, we just need more. Like I said, does it make you in the NFL with with one side tackle wise being serviceable? Can you coach around having one strong tackle? Yeah, I think so. I've, I think we've I've been places where we've done it. Um, Yes, there is a way you, you, you can you can help. I mean, no one, very few people have have five All Pro starters. Um, very few people have two tackles that are of the same caliber. It's, you know, some do, but very few do. And, and you have to find ways to to help that. I mean, you're always trying to help your weaknesses somewhere. Every very few teams are complete when it comes to having everything you absolutely would want to have on a roster. And um, that's our job as coaches is to find ways to one. Uh, highlight our strengths and, and to try to find a way to minimize whatever our weaknesses are because everybody has them. Everybody's got strengths and weaknesses on their roster, on their team, at whatever positions. Um, and that's my job to put guys in, in position to highlight those things and then again to help where we don't have, uh, you know, where, where we consider our weaknesses might be. So, yeah, it's definitely possible. I think it, I think it happens all around the league. How do you deal with the strain the of, of wanting to give Will patience, needing to give Will patience, a young, any young quarterback to grow? And, and needing to win game, um, it's a, it's a delicate balance because it's still at the end of the day a um, a business that we're all involved in that you know is production based and um, we haven't produced enough yet um, at any point and you still have to take that with a grain of salt because there are things that that we do have to get better at and that do aren't immediate but um, I'd say there's an urgency. You know, there's an urgency to get the things fixed that need to be fixed and uh, make improvements fast. And again, I think that's what makes uh, teams good in this league is how quickly you can fix an issue and how urgent you are to get it done. And, um, you know, you only got 17 weeks to get it all done. Um, and so that's a, that's our goal is, is to fix as much as we can fix as fast as possible. Will talked about that impulse to double clutch on a hitch the next time after the pick six. Do, do you see that as growth? Do you see that as a good thing? Or do you see that as something that still kind of needs to be coached that, to be um, yeah, I think that's the human nature. Uh, when when you have a when you have something go wrong, you, you're a little bit mentally you're just going to be hesitant on maybe the next time. Um, but I think there's growth and there's there's learning involved in that. And uh, maybe he pays a little bit more attention to what the leverage is or if the corner moves at all. I mean, there's there's little things that that does help you improve when those bad plays happen. Yeah. Um, because I do think you, you certainly learn way more, unfortunately, uh, in failure than you do in success. And right now, um, we've had enough failure to, to go around, but uh, you're certainly hoping that that promotes a whole bunch of growth. And I think that that's one of the things that's happening right now for Will, and I've been really encouraged by that. In terms of that, with his emotions, he's a, sometimes an emotional and fiery guy. Do you want him – do you want that as part of his game? Uh, yeah, I want Will to be himself, you know, whatever that is for him. Not every – all these quarterbacks aren't created equal. They don't all operate the same. Um, one of the things that he does uh, possess, and that, that's an intensity and a physicalness and, and a, an emotional part of the game that is good. Um, but I will say that most quarterbacks that I've ever been around do have a certain calmness um, during the game, and that part is really good. He communicates well when he comes to the sideline. Um, but, yeah, there's a time and a place for emotion, certainly, and I think that – that's one of the things he's always done done well is been able to show that. Um, so there's there's a balance I think involved in that, and um, you know I want to see him show the emotion when we do all the really good things and it's exciting. Um, that's what you want to see. As you look across the league, the offenses it seems like that run pass balance is, is tilting. Do you feel that's the league self correcting itself against a lot of the too high? And mm -hmm. if so, like do you think that's something that will continue? Uh, we'll see. You know, I do think that the sample size is small uh, right now, um, but there is a, there's been a shift. I think statistically, as you look at it, uh, teams are, are more um, intently running the football than maybe they were two years ago. Uh, so yeah, I think you're seeing a slight shift in, in process um, because it's hard to throw the ball all over the place against some of these defenses and, and how they play. 
and they make you make you earn it, and they put a lot on the quarterback to be able to complete, um, you know, seven eight balls a drive for six to nine drives a game. I mean, it's uh, we all understand the philosophy of, of what it, what that means, and uh, so I think the run game is something that is probably more in vogue now at this early part of the season than it was the last couple of years. Uh, I think the numbers would bear that out. The creativity and explosiveness of a Mike McDaniel's offense. Um, as an offensive-minded coach yourself, what do you see in that that has led to so much success for him? Uh, they're just – they're so creative. Um, they're unique because they have so much speed um, at all the positions on offense. They're, run, they're running backs, they're receivers. Um, they do a really nice job, uh, particularly with using Alec Ingold in the fullback – like a hybrid role with the fullback role. Um, they're just really, really thought out, uh, well-coached. They're technically sound. Um, everything they do from a schematic standpoint – uh, puts a ton of stress on the defense. Um, it's really fun as an offensive coach to watch. I think you see everybody probably tries to steal something from what they do, but uh, I don't know that you can ever duplicate what and how they do it because of the players they have. They have a very unique collection of players that um, not everybody has that same kind of speed. But, I mean, they're, they're unbelievably creative in how they deploy those people. Then in a week like this, what's the conversation like with Denard of, hey, they're going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at you. This is what we might want to prepare for. Yeah, I think they, they, you know, he's their their stuff's on tape. You know, they they do have a, an offensive core and they have things they believe in, and um, that stuff is usually not a surprise. But it's it's you're really more worried about how do you handle their their speed, um, how do you handle the perimeter, and then how do you make sure you you keep the keep the lid on top of that explosiveness because they're they you know last year their their season hasn't started the way they've wanted I'm sure, and but last year you know they're one of the most explosive offenses in football, and um, uh, there's a that's a huge challenge for us defensively. We'll just see how practice goes. Um, you know, again, sometimes when guys get pulled from games, it's it's not always necessarily means that their starting job is gone. It just means that they weren't playing very well in that game. Um, so we'll see. There's no. We'll, we'll let them both practice. They're both going to get reps, and um, they might even both play. We'll see how that looks. I don't have any real definitive answer on on that at the current moment, but as the week goes on, I'll have a little more clarity. And, uh, both being talked a lot about turnover margin defensively. You know, we've heard for a couple weeks now, we need to create more turnovers, but that's kind of a lot easier said than done. Have you guys been able to identify something your defense needs to do better to create those turnovers? Yeah, I think there's, there's definitely things we can do better. Um, I'm not going to tell you all the things that they are right now, um, but there's, there's things that help with turnovers. Um, part of it is turnovers sometimes are a little bit of luck. Uh, some of it's a little bit of we need to do a better job. I think w when you play with a lead, it allows you to go get the quarterback at a different rate than when you're ha watching them hand the ball off as they have, a, you know, they're playing with a lead against you. Uh, it gives you more opportunities to go after the quarterback, more opportunities for the ball to get loose. So I think playing with a lead uh, is one of the things that we've we got to do a better job of maintaining and playing with. So it gives our defense a chance to go uh, rush the quarterback and force them into mistakes. And uh, I think that's what good defenses and offenses, when they're playing complementary, do. They they force you into a, a game plan that you don't necessarily want to play, and you have a chance to affect the quarterback more often. Uh, when you're handing the ball off and you're chewing up clock and you're not getting passing opportunities, it's a lot harder to get the ball back uh, on defense. The, the ball usually in the air or on the quarterback is where you're creating turnovers. Most of these running backs usually don't cough the ball up very often. Um, they do a good job. So. It's kind of on the. It's it's a it's a holistic thing. It's not just the defense getting turnovers. It's our offense getting a lead and playing with the lead and allowing them to have opportunities to uh, good after the quarterback more often. Would you feel differently going on IR? Have you guys made that decision? Uh, not officially yet. We haven't made that decision. That'll probably come in the next day or two. But um, uh, I, I would say it's probably likely at this point that that'll be the case. For sure. You, when you said both will play at right tackle, you meant petite for ear and dunk. Okay, yes. Yeah. Those two. Okay. Yeah. For this week. Uh, yeah, we'll make a roster move for Gifford at some point. Yep. Well, last time you faced the Dolphins, the Pope 15 uh, led them to come back on Monday Night Football last year. Obviously, two different teams, completely different season. But what, if anything, can you draw from that Monday Night experience against Miami? Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Like you said, different team, uh, different season for both of us. Uh, anytime you play on Monday Night, regardless of where it is, uh, you know, the whole world's watching. It gives a little bit of extra excitement, so we got that. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was, that, was, that was a good one for us. We're just hoping to go do it and get another one down there. And obviously in a point of our season where we really need one. So 
um, you know, it's been fun getting to know them as a defense and kind of what we're expecting and obviously similar to what we saw through training camp with the structure and what they got. So uh, good opportunity for us to go out and show it, what we're made of. Last year with the, the comeback and then the emotion that you showed during that, that's been kind of one of your signature moments. So far this year, you know, we haven't seen as much emotion from you even after good plays. Is that something that you're dialing back or is that just waiting for it to come out at the right time, you know, after a win or something? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it's uh, I'm just going to let my emotions play out however they see fit in the moment. And, um, yeah, I guess I haven't really thought about that as to why maybe I haven't shown that side of me yet this season. And um, you know, I know it's in there and it just maybe just calls for the right situation. But, uh, yeah, that was cool. Um, I think anytime you get a win like that, it you know, response like that's appropriate. But I don't know if we've had a situation this year where I thought of, you know, the response like that was appropriate. So maybe uh, something might happen this game where we can get some of that. In that game, you had a scramble, and you and Jalen Ramsey, you know, you lowered the shoulder. Uh, talking to some of the guys, they were like, that's the moment where we saw he got that dog. If you remember, you know, the interaction with uh, your teammates, you know, after that, uh, what was that like? Yeah, I think, you know, we, we scored that drive, so that was just a way when we got back off the from that drive, just – Felt good energy, good juice. Uh, not, not a position I want to put myself in as this team's quarterback with risking my body like that. But um, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to feel that, and I'm just trying to do everything I can uh, this year, this game, to keep gaining the trust of, of those guys. How big does a quarterback's role need to be in sack avoidance? Uh, definitely. I mean, everyone's got a role in it. You know, everyone from the receivers, running backs, tight ends, quarterbacks, O line, obviously. So. A lot of things that I can look towards internally, I think where I was setting myself in the pocket some of the times wasn't putting our line in the best spot to succeed. So playing around with that and um, understanding you know, what launch points for what specific plays or protections are most appropriate and just hammering down on them. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a couple plays where I you know, let them know like it was definitely more on me than you guys. Like it sucks that it goes down in the stat sheet as a sack, but it's something that I'm a part of and we're all a part of. Thing to NPF after the rough game that he had Sunday. I'm always gonna have his back. Yeah, I'm always gonna have his back. You know, I was just saying like I'm gonna keep stepping up and and, and trusting that I'm gonna have that time. And people get beat, and, and you know I make bad plays. Everyone makes bad plays once in a while, and uh, you know he's just gonna have to dirt it and, and move on to the next one because we knows we know he's got what it takes to be a tackle in this league, and he just got the best of him that play. You ever have that feeling of needing a win? Just how do you walk the line? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely not. You can't go in like thinking like, oh, we have to win, we have to win. Um, it's it's just we have to execute. We have to execute the game plan. And um, there's no situation that you're put in that really, unless it's you know end of the game, desperation time, where it is appropriate to stray from that game plan or stray from whatever job you have on those plays. And yeah, there's a couple times even in that last game where towards the end where we kind of felt that way. And yeah, going back and grading myself I think uh, you know if I just take a underneath throw on that third and long interception we get the fourth and manageable there's still time to go down there and score and make it a one score game so it's as much as I might have felt like pressing might have been a little necessary in that situation it wasn't so I'm, I'm continuing to learn that and know that uh, you know as long as we just continue to operate and execute to what we're expected then everything will just come together when you say grading yourself do you put an actual number on your performance every week no I'm just talking yeah, just what I'm seeing and how I can probably improve from my last performance. You've got a pretty good rhythm with, with DeAndre on Sunday. How good was that? How, how much you're hoping that can continue at a place where you had success last year with him? Yeah, I felt good. I felt like we had a good package for him, and uh, he found the soft spots in that in that defense, and he, he ran some nice routes. And, you know, I felt like I was seeing him and feeling him all day uh, really well and just giving him some good balls to, to run and catch with. And... Uh, it was good for him and his confidence to, to have that type of game, and um, we're going to continue to to work with him going forward. Going back to that game last year, you mentioned Hopkins. Your, your touchdown to him when you scrambled, it was almost like a no-look throw. Can you kind of take us back through that, just what you're thinking going through that? Yeah, no, it was um, just more plays that I personally think I need to make in terms of being able to get out of the pocket and make something happen off schedule, and that was a nice one we had last year where – didn't like one, two, got out of the pocket and found him kind of last second flash. So it's a credit to him to know kind of where he's at in space and settle in that coverage. And that's what makes him great as a player, I think, um, is that understanding 
understanding for space, and we're going to need more of that on, on Monday. Just continue to instill confidence in myself and others. I think it's 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 easy to kind of be in the woe is me, like what what am I doing wrong? Like am I not good enough? And you can never let like that exactly you know seep into your brain. You got to come back and just remind yourself of what kind of player you are and what got you this point. And you know we are the one percent of the one percent of the one percent, and we remind each other that. And, and there's a reason why we're all here, and um, we should have no fear when it comes to going out there and playing on, against any team. I think I do well. Um, I think it's 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 been harder and harder after each of these losses to kind of come back and and and, and be that way. But I've been impressed with how the guys have been able to just put it, just con continue to have the confidence in themselves and others, and just come to work. Uh, regardless, like you wouldn't know that we're 0 and 3 walking around the way we've been working and, and communicating with each other, and that's how it should be. So I'm I'm proud of the guys for that. Are you I've been really like off, like honestly, the couple times where I might, might have like caught myself to like just go on, and I'll just like maybe look at it for a second. But uh, yeah, no, uh, I've been thinking about that too. It's like it's not like I'm deleting the apps and everything, whatever. But it's just more so I don't, I'm not going to actively like search for what people are saying about me. No, you and the team can't really ask for patience, but Brian has talked about the need for patience with certain elements of, of things. How do you kind of balance that? Yeah, like you, we want to come out firing and you know be three and zero and get this thing started and rolling. And um, you know the reality is like sometimes it takes a little bit for a new team and a new staff and then um, just new everybody to feel each other and get into the rhythm that they they know that they can achieve. So we're we're still on that on that path and um, I just can't wait till we get there because I know it's going to be soon. When the last time that you guys were, were in, the, in the end zone in the fourth quarter may have been Christmas Eve of last year. How do you keep from letting that become like a yeah, yeah. I heard a really good message, and it's you know the first 55 minutes of the game as a quarterback, it's all about giving your ch team a chance to win in that last five minutes, and that's you know what we see week week in and week out with the one score games that happen almost every single game across the league, where it, it all comes down to what happens you know either who's who's got the ball last or who who does the best with the ball in their hands in that last third of the fourth quarter, and. Um, we got to do better, and I got to do better that, that as a quarterback. Um, you know, we can we can drive on, or score in, on our opening drive, but it doesn't matter if we, you know, don't make things happen at the end of the game. So we got to be better in that area, and we got to start scoring some touchdowns in the fourth quarter. How closely do you pay attention to what two is going through? Do stories like that kind of make you reevaluate or evaluate differently your job as a quarterback? Yeah, no, I I feel for him, and it's been terrible seeing the couple. Um, Injuries he sustained over the last few years, and uh, you know it's just it's, it's something that we don't like to think about as players, but it's the reality of the game, and it's so it's so hard to pretend like that's not um, you know something that's a potential for any of us to happen to. And um, I've always found that you know it's the more you you play like cautious, the more you're likely to be hurt. So I feel like the best way is just to go out and play aggressive and, and you know obviously protect your body but the second you start thinking about those things then um, maybe not, might not be the best for you so but yeah it's it's praying for him and his and his family and that team uh, I know coach McDaniel said some great things about how they're uh, approaching that situation going forward and I know he's going to see a neurologist or something I saw so um, yeah just wishing the best for him uh, yeah it would have been fun to, to play against him and compete against him but Sometimes, like when you throw a pick six on a hitch, you might <laughs> hesitate the next time you try to throw one. Uh, I think I tried to throw one later in the game, and I kind of like double, double clutched it. But it's just a kind of a matter of trusting what you're seeing. And even though something might have happened in the last play or the last drive that you know might not have gone the right way, just trusting that you've been seeing these things, you're ready, and that you're just going to react to it. It's what you see. So, yeah, I, um, it's tough going I'm back out there after throwing a pick six and like an opening play like that. But just try not to let it get into your mind and just see things or let it develop how you see it. Well, you look at a lot of your scoring drives, like it's the first, second, or third drive when you guys are, are scoring other game. I don't know if it's still a part of the script or not, but if it is, like what can you guys do to pull
pull that success from the scripted plays to the duration of, of the game? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think it might be – I think obviously guys are geared up for that, you know, scripted plays we have to open games, and they know, like, hey, I got a really good chance of getting the ball here. I, I, gotta, I know I got to be on this assignment. These are the couple looks that I'm really keyed in for on these plays. Like, I'm going to be ready for them. And um, maybe it's just on us as, as just a whole group to study a little harder and, and know, like, once those 10 plays are gone, we still got the, you know, however other many plays on the call sheet that still got to come off or hopefully that we're able to come off. And you got to be just as dialed for those as you are for the ones that we're going to open with. So, um, yeah, just I'll, he, he's continued to preach to us to keep finding things to, cause, to add to our um, preparation routine and – Obviously, what we're doing isn't getting it done, so we're going to try to find a couple things here and there, studying-wise or body-wise, uh, to get us ready. And um, I definitely think that all of us can benefit from just a little bit of extra preparation. What about tempo, like tempo and creating that sense of urgency? Uh, how much do you think that can help us out? Tempo in terms of our offensive tempo, tempo you're saying? On offense, exactly. like maybe, you know, coach giving you three plays and you, you have those for the next couple to, to work with. Yeah, I feel, like, um, I feel like we've operated well in any of those kind of like on the ball, uh, faster situations, end of the first half or two minute end of the game when we were kind of just getting people out there. And I know they were playing soft and we were able to kind of um, pick them underneath. But uh, I think that we can definitely operate as an offense that way. And I know Callie sees that and likes that. And uh, it's just going to be a matter of when he sees it best fit for us as a team and when we're going to use it in the season. You mentioned the, the noise, trying to drown some of that out. The, for a quarterback, how helpful is it to have a coach that hasn't hesitated to have your back and remain patient with you through three weeks of some growing pains? That means a lot. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, you know, I, I know he's got my back and I got his and we're in this together. And, uh, you know, I only go as far as he goes and vice versa. So um, I feel like we got a great relationship in that respect. But um, I just got to keep doing what I can to be the best quarterback I can be for him on game days. And I know that he's working his tail off to continue to improve as a head coach and, and a play caller. And we've already made a lot of great strides in that area in our dynamic um, throughout the past few weeks.